Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to The 51%, a show about women reshaping our world. Coming up, it's possibly France's worst ever rape case. A husband who drugged his wife and then invited more than 70 strangers to rape her at their home for almost a decade has now gone on trial. Also, equality in the world of advertising. How far has the industry progressed since the days of Mad Men? I'll be talking shortly to Claudia Elan, a creative copywriter based here in Paris. But first, and it's a rape trial that shocked France while making headlines across the world. Dominic Pellico has admitted to recruiting dozens of strangers online to rape his wife after drugging her with sleeping pills. Investigators have encountered some 200 instances of rape with more than 70 alleged abusers over almost a decade. His wife, Giselle Pellico, waiving her right to be anonymous in the hope it might help spare other women from similar ordeals. The case also highlighting the issue of drug-facilitated sexual assault as Aurore Dupuis reports. Chemical submission or drugging someone without their consent for criminal purposes. This type of violence against women has long stayed unnoticed in France. According to the French Agency for the Safety of Medicine, 41% of the abusers are known to the victim. Giselle endured at least 200 rapes without knowing it. Her own husband crushed sleeping pills into her food and recruited strangers online to rape her in their home. He filmed the ordeal for nearly 10 years with more than 70 alleged abusers. Giselle had a string of symptoms, memory loss, extreme fatigue, abdominal pain. She sought medical advice but was never diagnosed. My mother experienced 10 years of medical malpractice. She saw gynecologists, general practitioners, Three neurologists, doctors failed to detect the problem, which clearly shows that one of the major issues here is the lack of training of these specialists on the subject, which today completely flies under the radar. The medical field is supposed to be the first line of defense for victims. Giselle requested that the trial not be held behind closed doors to raise awareness. There will be extremely difficult moments. She feels she doesn't have to hide and she doesn't have to be ashamed of what she went through. And it's also her way of saying that you can overcome this, even if today is just the beginning, and that people need to know. And the shame needs to switch sides. The term chemical submission doesn't exist in France's criminal law, but it's been punishable since 2018 by five years in prison and a 75,000 euro fine. In 2023, the French Parliament was rocked by a case in which MP Sandrine Jossot accused a senator of drugging her with the intent to sexually abuse her. I'm not speaking to you as a female victim, but as a member of Parliament. I'm outraged that this issue is not being taken seriously. French authorities then tasked the lawmaker with a mission to combat chemical submission, but her work has been put on hold due to the current political crisis in France and the resignation of the government. A Ugandan Olympic athlete, Rebecca Cheptegei, has died after being doused in petrol and set on fire by a former boyfriend. The 33-year-old marathon runner who competed in the Paris Olympics suffered 80% of burns to her body. Officials in northwestern Kenya, where the athlete lived, said she was targeted after returning home from church with her two daughters. According to government data in 2022, nearly 34% of Kenyan girls and women have suffered physical violence, with married women being at particular risk. Now, it is perhaps one of the most successful sports ads made in recent years. An ad by the telecom giant Orange during the Women's World Cup last year, which cleverly transformed supposed male footballers into real-life women players. This 
This is an excellent reminder of our deeply held biases about women's sport and has won prizes the world over, including this year's Garrity Awards, which have just been announced. The Garrity Awards are the only ones to have female-only juries. A personal disclaimer here, I was a member of this year's Paris Jury. And joining me now is fellow jury member Claudia Ilan, a copywriter for the Marcel Agency, to talk about sexism in the industry. Claudia, thank you so much for coming in. My understanding is that France still has very, very few women chief creative officers in the industry. Why do you think that's the case? Well, I mean, I think that's something that happens in a lot of industries, but I was researching a little bit about this and I saw that particularly in the advertising, in the tech, and even in the entertainment industry, this is the case. And I think it's quite interesting because when you look at the entry level, you have 50-50. But when it starts uh, going into a uh, creative director or um, CCOs, you go down to 25% if you are lucky, which I think is insane. And I think one of the reasons might be because um, there's a very big difference in the maternity-paternity leave. So... Maternity leave here is 16 weeks. Paternity leave, and this has changed quite recently, is 25 days. But what impact does that have on the final product? I think we in the advertising industry have a duty to represent society as we see it or as we would like it to be. Because it's been proven even, you know, when we're working advertising, we're like, oh, but we're not saving lives, you know, it's just an ad. But... A lot, of, uh, a lot of data shows that actually people are affected by advertising, like the way we see ourselves, the way we see ourselves represented, or the role of a woman in an ad can shape the way we think a woman should be. Like, should the woman be doing the grocery shopping, or should the woman just be a sidekick, or should the woman be represented, like in the ad, you know? Dynamic, powerful, strong. So it is our duty to represent women in a dynamic, powerful, and strong uh, way. But if there are no women making decisions about the outcome of the ad, then maybe we are not doing the job. And then you're reinforcing sexist stereotypes, aren't you? I mean, yes. I think now there's a lot of work being done, uh, not only from the advertising agencies themselves, where we obviously want to push a different product and we want to have a good female representation, and we want to have a woman driving a car when it's a car ad and not always a man. And we want to have, you know, a woman be the face of a sports brand, not just because she's a female athlete, but just because she's an athlete. And that's that. But also, I think there's a change in the client mindset because they know that if you represent women in a better light or just in the light it should be, you're going to have a better brand value in the long term with women because women are buyers, like women are your consumers. And if we see ourselves in a light that we don't like, we're not going to like your brand and we're not going to buy you. So I think it's going both ways. We're like, we're trying to shift that. And when it comes to the ad that we've just seen, the orange ad, that went viral because it challenged all of our deeply internalised stereotypes about women in sports, didn't it? Absolutely. And I think a very interesting thing about the ad is that when uh, the creative team thought about it, they didn't think about it to target it to women. They thought about it targeted to men because they thought about, you know, all of those men who are, you know, commenting on social media like, oh, you know, female soccer, it sucks, you know, uh, it's not entertaining, they're not as good as male players. So they thought, okay, what if we get into the media that they love, you know, re-watching all these amazing plays by uh, male footballers and we trick them to change their perception. We make them think, oh, you know, you're watching this uh, grease man or whatever, but in truth, you're watching female soccer without you knowing. So you're already exposed to the greatness of French female soccer. And one of the very interesting things is that it actually had a very positive impact uh, with young girls. So you have comments on social media from teachers saying, I'm showing this in my class because it inspires uh, young women to want to become athletes because they see how good these women are at their sport. But according to a study by Nielsen, roughly 75% of all consumer decisions 
will be made or influenced by women by the year 2028. So if you're boiling it down to just simply making money, it's extremely counterproductive to ignore that trend, surely. I mean, I think we have to understand that women are buyers and women make some, most of the decision, uh, buying decision making in a household. That's how it is. They influence everything from buying a car for a family to what shampoo we're going to have at home to what they want to buy for themselves. So I think it's very important for marketeers to acknowledge that it's not only 50% of the population, but it's also a major decision power driver. So finally, how do you remedy that? How do you get people inside the industry and those that they work with, their clients, to understand the importance of gender equality? Well, I think on one hand, uh, within the industry, one thing that we need to do is we need to shine a spotlight on female advertisers, on women who are actually in leading positions or women who will be in leading positions. I think because like the ad that we saw, I think this will inspire younger women also to become part of the industry. I think we need to make a change or it would be amazing to make a change on the roles we put in the household, especially with the paternity maternity leave. Another thing that I think is that we need to stop thinking about uh, having token women, but actually having a woman there because she does a great job and that's just how it is. And in advertising, your portfolio says it, like, that's it. You look at someone's website. Um, and also, to sell it to a client, we can not only talk about the fact that you can have a positive impact in the world, but also it's good business. I mean, that's just facts. Claudia, it's been lovely speaking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that's it for this edition. But in the meantime, we would love to hear from you. So do reach out with your suggestions via Facebook, Instagram or X. So until the next show, bye for now.